Let's talk about the regulation of protein synthesis. Proteins are energy costly to make. You use quite a bit of ATP to form a protein. So having a way to regulate when they're made is really important. There are transcriptional and translational control mechanisms to prevent genes from being transcribed or translated when it's not beneficial for the cell. Again, if I don't have lactose around, why would I make a lactose enzyme? It makes no sense. And because they are as expensive as they are, energy-wise, it doesn't make sense to make them if I don't need them. So having a control mechanism is very beneficial. Bacterial operons, which are, coordinate, bleh, are a coordinated set of genes that are regulated. So an operon is something that I can induce or I can repress. Induce means it's usually not working and I can get it to work. Repress means that it's usually on, it's usually working, and I make it not work. So inducible, I only turn it on when I need it. Repressible, I turn it off when I don't need it. The LAC operon. The LAC operon is actually the most well-known, well-studied bacterial operon. There are three primary locations on it that we talk about. The regulator, these are genes that code for a protein capable of repressing the operon. So it regulates the expression of the genes that are made here. The control locus or location. It's made up of a promoter, which is a spot that RNA polymerase binds to, to make an mRNA, and an operator. The operator is your red light, green light. Then you've got the structural locus or lo loci maybe. There are three genes that are back to back to back that code for enzymes important for lactose metabolism. Lactose is one of the simple sugars that we can use, unless you're lactose intolerant, but that's a whole different story. So calling it the lac operon makes sense because it controls the formation of lactose enzymes. The lac operon is not needed in the absence of lactose. So it waits for lactose to be present to turn it on. It also has a secondary requirement to turn on. Glucose has to be absent as it is pref the preferred sugar to metabolize. Glucose is a simple sugar that is very easy to use, costs less energy to use as well. And if it's present, I don't need lactose enzymes. There's no reason to have them. The second thing, if lactose isn't there, why would I make lactose enzymes? It legitimately makes no sense. If I don't have lactose present, why would I make lactose enzymes? It doesn't make sense. We want this to work basically under two conditions. One, lactose is present. Two, glucose is not present. I only wanna make these enzymes if lactose is my only fuel source, my only sugar that I can use. Here's a figure of the lac operon. We've got the regulator, promoter, the operator, and three structural genes in sequence. The regulator actually produces this guy that is a repressor protein. The repressor protein binds right after the operator, preventing RNA polymerase from accessing any of these genes, any of the structural genes. The repressor protein itself is what we call allosteric, meaning that it has two binding sites. One of the binding sites is for binding to the DNA, acting as a roadblock so that RNA polymerase can't read this. The other binding site, which is on this other side over here, actually binds to lactose. And you'll see how that works in just a minute. The big takeaway from this particular figure if the repressor is present, this will not be expressed. Also, because the regulator is upstream of the operator and the promoter, it 
isn't controlled by the promoter and the operator itself. Instead, it is controlling those two things to prevent this from being read or made. If lactose is added to the cell's environment, it triggers events to turn the operon on. The binding of, the la of lactose to the repressor protein causes a conformational change. It changes its shape and the repressor is dislodged from the operator segment of the DNA. With that opened up, RNA polymerase can now bind. Remember I said it binds in two places. It binds to the DNA and then it has this other site here. If lactose is added, it binds here and it's almost like, um, it's almost like it, uh, a wishbone getting pulled apart. As this binds to the lactose up here, it opens this up, allowing it to basically let loose and get off of the, um, the gene. Once this is out of the way, RNA polymerase can get to the operator and start transcription of these genes to make the enzymes. Something that's kind of interesting in how this works, you can see that as the RNA polymerase <clears throat> comes in and reads this, it makes one really long piece of RNA, but it's three separate genes. Although this ginormous piece of RNA is made, it's actually making three separate protein molecules, three separate um, translations into enzymes, and they stay separated because it isn't one big protein. These three proteins that are made are used to metabolize or break down lactose. So we have lactose getting broken down by these enzymes. There's the inactive repressor. Remember I said it had two binding sites, one for the DNA itself and then the other for the lactose. Now imagine that this comes in and opens it up, basically causes the door to open. I know they didn't have it in the figure, but that's what actually happens to get it to let go to allow access to this. As lactose gets depleted, we run out of lactose. I know that sounds really um, redundant, but it's still the truth. As lactose gets metabolized, broken down, we start to run out. That means that I, I've got enough enzyme I don't need anymore. The amount of lactose is going down. I don't need to make these anymore. I've got enough enzyme I don't need anymore. So what do I do? Well, eventually, as the lactose starts to go further and further down, the lactose that was holding on to the repressor to keep it out of the way is also going to get used. When that happens, the repressor goes back into place, again, blocking or inhibiting the ability to read that gene by RNA polymerase. The operator gets locked. The transcription of those three structural genes and thus the synthesis of the lactose enzyme stops. And we've got an off switch. We don't make unnecessary things inside of a cell. It costs too much energy and can literally end up being the death of a cell if we use all of this energy to make things that we don't need. Having the ability to control whether these things work or don't, the ability to control protein synthesis is actually fairly important. Well, fairly, it really is important.